Hey, what's up guys? This is Firm, and uh, I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, make a tutorial on this type of thing. I'm just going to call them ribbons because I don't know what else to call them. Well, I do, but if you don't know how to do it, you won't really know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. I'm going to call them ribbons. So, open up Cinema 4D. Okay, now it's really called a spline, and they use sweep nerves to animate it. So I'll show you how to do just a basic, um, just a basic little like curly Q shape and animate it, and then I'll show you how to do like curves and shit. So uh, for the curly Q thing, we're gonna want to use a helix. We're gonna go ahead add the helix, and then let's adjust the plane that it's on so it's going from left to right. Let's make it longer, like that, and then let's turn our start radius down, let's go to 100, and then end radius also down to 100, and uh, that'll do. So it's going to follow along this curly path thing. Actually, let's make the height a little bit, not as much, there. Alright. So now we have to figure out what shape we want the ribbon to be. So if you want like a flat, truly ribbon-like object, you would go into your spline tab again, and then go to rectangle and make it flat. So uh, I'm not going to do that because I want to use a circle. So there. So just go ahead, get your circle, make it about as thick as you want the ribbon to be. And um, now... With that all said and done, you're going to go into this tab right here, your NURBS tab, and then go to Sweep NURBS. And then the first thing you add into the Sweep NURBS is the original spline. So that's my helix. It's what I want the secondary spline to be following along. So I'm going to drag that into the Sweep NURBS first. Then I want to go ahead and click and drag the circle in. And as you can see, you have this thing now. And it looks beautiful, and I love it, like a child. And now you can fuck with all your settings by going into your sweet nerves. So, end growth, just do that, and that's how you can animate it. So what you would do is, you would go to, you know, frame zero, hold down control and keyframe the end growth, hold down control and click the little circle next to it, and then say you go to frame 75, drag it all the way up to 100, hold down control, keyframe it again, and then it should animate through just like that so that's how you I did that and then what I did to make it look all uh, like let's see an example is right here how they're all like that like they kind of weave not really weave but they're all next to each other and they're all perfect and pretty and shit so you just take this copy and paste and then drag it slightly to the left or to the right and just keep on doing that, and if you do it exactly, they, uh, they won't intersect, which will make it look nice. And then you can uh, go ahead and, let's see, blah, 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 alright, yeah, so that's how I did that. I'm going to delete all that now. Now I'm going to show you how to do a, uh, a cool, like, curving. Just a, not like a helix shape, but just a slight curve. It's like a 90 degree angle, but... Only it's like curving. I guess that really didn't make any sense, but fuck you. Okay, so I found this the easiest way to do it because otherwise you'd have to go to your B spline and hand draw a curve, so the rectangle is much straighter. So we're going to go ahead and leave the dimensions how they are, and then I'm going to select rounding so we get that nice rounded edge. Then you can go and mess with the radius right here. I'm going to put the radius up a little bit. And then you, uh, let's see, you're going to go to your selection tool and then go to a point selection and then make editable and if you notice if you click a point and delete it it'll just keep the spline connected but it'll just uh, make it one less point so I'm gonna go ahead control C and then you're gonna wanna uncheck close spline so now when you delete points it doesn't close it it leaves it open if you know what I'm talking about so there that's that 90 degree angle I was talking about that I wanted so that looks good right there I'm gonna go ahead Put this right there, maybe scale it up a bit. Alright. Let's 
angle our camera. Okay, and now I'm going to want a ribbon to go along that. So we're going to go ahead and make our ribbon. So I want it about mm, that wide and that thin. So you want it, you know, pretty thin, more wide than it is thin. And then uh, go ahead, add sweet nerves again. Remember, drag the first spline in and then your rectangle or whatever shape. And then it should do that, but then you look at it, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? I didn't ask for this. I don't want it sideways like that. That's bullshit. So then you're just going to select your sweep nerves, go down to details, scroll down, and then you can just go from and then just rotate that. It's going to be at negative 360. So that's that. Now it's all flat and turdy. And once again, you can just adjust your end growth or your start growth. So it will go just like that. And then uh, you can also adjust with your rotation. So you can make it, you know, kind of spin like that. That kind of looks retarded, but whatever. Get the point. And then uh, if you guys follow Grayscale Gorilla, you would know that he has a tutorial on something like this, but he makes a big, like, like a wall, I guess. Like a fucking ribbons. I don't know. Wall of ribbons. And then, yeah. And he says this, and then he animates them all. And that actually looks pretty sick. So you guys sh should go check that out. But that's basically the uh, essentials of sweet nerves and splines. Very basic, but if you uh, keep using them, you can uh, you can really get some nice effects, and you'll start to experiment with it, and you'll figure some pretty cool shit out. And uh, there's just one more thing I want to show you guys, and this is something that uh, people rarely use. I almost never see anybody use this in intros, unless they're really skilled and I think it looks freaking awesome. So you just go to your spline tab again, not MoGraph, spline, and then add text. So this makes it so you can apply those same principles but to a text object. So you can, like in my, uh, what the fuck was it? My fucking demo reel. I did something like this, but I don't have that font on here. Tit fuck. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and use. Hmm. Ooh, I know what font. I like slant. Slanty slant. Where is it? There it is. Alright. So I want it to say penis. No, that's immature. I want it to say cock. Okay. There we go. Now let's, uh. I'm gonna make it go along a, a fucking helix, actually. I think that'd be sick. I've never done this before, guys, so bear with me if I don't do it right the first time. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and scale my text down. And now I'm going to see if I can make the uh, the text kind of follow the path of the helix, which I think would be freaking awesome. So I'm going to make the height a little bit bigger. Alright, let's see what happens. Now it might be rotated incorrectly, so the text might be all fucked up. Might be backwards. Hey, it worked. Perfect. I mean, that looks freaking weird, but as you can see, it does say what I wanted it to, and... I'd be willing to bet if you added ambient occlusion to this scene, it would look pretty awesome. I'm just going to go ahead and make this thing white. And then, as before, guys, you can just... Let's see, where's my end growth? Alright, that's that. So we want it 75, we want it at 100%. Hold down Control, keyframe it. Put that at 0. I think this looks pretty sweet, guys. See how the text is like... Look at that. Ooh. Orgasm. Ooh. Yeah. That's nice. That's very nice. I like that. So yeah, guys, you can just experimento with all that. Make something sweet and sexy and savory and show it to me. So yeah, I hope this tutorial helped you guys. And, uh, peace.